Since circular features are common items, Mastercam has toolpaths dedicated to making these larger round holes. The part shown on screen is a wooden turkey call which was made as a prize for an archery shoot to raise money for breast cancer research. It has several circular features. I first want to machine this top round pocket. From the point slash circle toolpaths, I'll select circle mill. The point manager window will open. I can select anywhere on a circle's perimeter because I've chosen the circle mill toolpath. I'll select this edge and accept this selection by right clicking. The right clicking option to accept the selection will only work if I do not move my mouse after selecting the geometry. In the toolpath window, I'll select tool, then select library filter, then filter, none. I'll select the flat bottom end mill as the tool type. I'll set the tool diameter equal to 1 inch and accept this selection. I'll select the 1 inch end mill and again I'll accept this. Since the part is wood, I'll set the cutting speed to 500. The feed per tooth to 0 0.01. The plunge rate to 25 and I'll add the comment to machine the top pocket with the 1 inch carbide end mill. I'll select the cup parameters and here in the upper right hand corner the diameter of the selected geometry can be seen but it's grayed out so I can't change it. Just below is the start angle of 90 degrees. This will have the tool start at the 12 o'clock position of the circle. A setting of 0 would have the tool start at the 3 o'clock position and a setting of 180 would have the tool start at the 9 o'clock position. I'll leave the default setting of 90. I'll set the stock to leave on floor and walls to 0 and leave the compensation direction to left so that the pocket will be climb milled. I'll select the roughing tab and enable rough or the tool will only take one pass at the final diameter. Like the other tool path types, Mastercam will display a graph showing how the tool path will work. This tool path will have the tool helix down in to the depth of cut unless you uncheck the helical entry, in which case it will then plunge into the material. Once at the cut depth, it will machine a circle followed by successively larger circles until the final diameter is completed. I'll set the step over percentage to 70. The helical entry default values are fine. As a precaution, don't set the minimum radius too small to less than 10% or the inside edge of the tool may produce too much heat when cutting because it's moving too slowly compared to the outer edge. If the maximum radius set larger than 50%, a tower material will be left in the center of the hole. I'll select the finishing tab, enable finishing. I can set up multiple semi-finish and finish passes and each can have a different feed and speed than the roughing passes. I'll enable the finish option and set the number of passes to 1 and the spacing to 0 0.05. Next I'll choose the linking parameters and because I chain the geometry at the bottom of the arc the depth will be correct. I don't want the coolant on so I'll accept these selections. The cut lines look good so I'll verify the toolpath. And the simulation results look good, so I'll exit the simulation.